in Gaza, one of the things I noticed about drones, because you could hear them overhead, is that they created a, a they created a sense of oppression in Gaza. They talk about you always feel like you're being watched because you can, among other things, you can hear the drones. And as one man said to me, in Gaza, Israel sees everything. They even see where the bird lays her egg. Doesn't need new target. Target five. Pilot copies. Sensor copies. This is a weapon that terrorizes. It terrorizes the people we don't want it to terrorize. It creates enemies. It makes us unsecure. It is not a good choice of weapons. I don't believe in war to start with, but if you're going to choose weapons, this is not a weapon to choose. White pickup arrived in front of target building. Pilot copy. If we are citizens of the United States, these drones are ours. We build them. We fly them. We fire the missiles. The voice of complicity, I mean, the, the, the voice of silence is complicity. In this case, if we don't get out there and shut them down, it is our fault. We can't blame it on anybody else. Shut them down! If possible, keep eyes on building and pick up. Building has the priority. Pilot. MC, in order to do that, I need uh, tail 107 to come off its current target. Get permission for 107 to come south. I'm saying copy. And Cesar, leave the uh, bridge locked up till we get permission to come off that target. Roger, Wilco. I think it's very important that we stop the drones and end the wars. That drones are extrajudicial killing, and anything that escalates the violence in the long run is bad for everybody. Two years ago, I was, just about this date, I was arrested at Creech Air Force Base in Nevada, which is the, the headquarters for the Air Force drone program. And the, uh, and, uh, I guess as the drone program is now increasing exponentially and that I think our resistance needs to to, uh, to expand as well and so uh, people invited me to come out and so I, I came. And I think it's one of the other things about this technology is it really fits the citizen soldier <laughs> mold yeah. that uh, people are able to uh, take part in combat without being fitted out and sent around the world and uh, you know the weekend warrior can just do their shift in front of the video screen and uh, you know but the results are deadly. Pilot MC, Shade 2 2 cleared off target. Sister you can break lock on the bridge and lock up the target 5 with tail 107. Roger. As Judy was mentioning about our trial in, in Las Vegas Last September, from being arrested for trespassing at Creech Air Force Base, the headquarters of the Air Force drone program, our witnesses were able to speak over the judge's objections about the uh, the very classic example of the of the necessity defense. A building is on fire. There's a no trespassing sign on the door. There's a child in the window screaming. Is it? a crime to break down that door, ignore the no trespassing sign, and go to the child. Pilot, Sentinel, request weapons load out. Uh, Sentinel, pilot, I've got eight missiles and two bombs on two predators in the target vicinity. So when we finally were sentenced, our judge told us that we were guilty of trespass because the harm we were addressing was not imminent. It was too far away and used cases such as the School of the Americas or the Pentagon and places where people were protesting an atrocity that was happening on the other side of the world and that we were not close enough to the burning building and because the child in the burning building was in Afghanistan, our protests in, uh, in Nevada were not legal, ignoring the fact the trigger is pulled right. in Nevada. In reply to that, I was able to say, I quoted a drone pilot from Creech who said this, when I'm flying the drones, the war is 7,000 miles away, meaning the distance from Nevada to Afghanistan, and the war is 18 inches away, the distance from his face to the screen. The drone operators 
are supposed to their own languages that they determine what is an imminent threat. And they can decide that from Nevada. They can decide that from here. Right. What, this, what this technology has done in a very unique way is it's bringing the war home. The war is being engaged, the war is being waged, war crimes are being committed, not on a battlefield in Afghanistan only. They're being committed right here. Haji Sada killed along with seven of his family members in a U.S. air and ground attack in the Sahak area of Zormat District, Kaktia Province, December 2008. Malada, killed in the village of Shagay, Farrar province, Afghanistan, on the night of 3 February 2008. Poor age 50 killed by U.S. airstrikes by part of a double wedding procession. And for Karim, age 15, he was killed by a U.S. airstrike in Nangahara province. The most dangerous thing we do today is challenge the system, challenge our government. As a former colonel, as a retired colonel, as a former government official who's been with the government, you know, 40 years, I think my greatest public service is now challenging the government and challenging these things called drones. These drones, and you might as well just call them assassination ma machines. That's what these drones are used for. Targeted assassination, extrajudicial ultimate death for people who have not been convicted of anything. Pickup now has priority. Pilot copies. Sensor copies. Pilot, send on. Expect to be cleared hot on white pickup. Pilot, let's, let's uh, spin up a weapon on tail 107. Copy. Ula Zari, 12 years old, was killed by U.S. airstrikes while targeting of a double wedding procession on the way to one of the group's houses in the village of Cochona. Nangahar province on July 6, 2008. In memory of 17 year old Nadia, she was killed when her father had been spotted as a high value target. We're going to be killing people. We don't know who we're killing, and it doesn't matter how many generals back there over that fence says these are surgical military implements. We know exactly what they're doing. Well, if that's true, why did they kill the wedding party of 68 people in Afghanistan? How many people in their government have said, I'm not going to do what my government tells me to do? Those war resistors that we've had, the conscientious objectors, the people who say, no, I will not do this in the name of my country. Are criminal acts committed by our country, and I will not be a part of it. Abraham, 52, killed by U.S. cluster bombs in the fields near the village of Rabat in Herat province, Afghanistan, on 21 December 2001. For all the unknown who've been killed and assassinated, for them I stand with them. all the women who are trying to protect their children from our violence. Of course, what the Jones can't communicate to us that we need so much to know, both we here and our friends there, is the suffering and the sorrow of warfare. The suffering and the sorrow and the loss and the bereavement. The first time that I went to Afghanistan, I actually stayed inside of a hospital. And I got to know a little fellow, his name was Esma Chulla. He was seven years old. And he was just beaming because the physical therapist had patted him on the head and said, oh, he's a real puck dude. He never cried through all of the dressing changes. And this little one's body had been severely broken and battered. He never knew which side had hit him. And on this most recent trip, 
I went back to the hospital to donate blood. I've got O negative and they really want my blood. So I showed up and as I was sitting on a park bench, a young boy hobbled over and his face was completely bandaged, only one eye was showing. And he spoke to the woman sitting next to me. He said, I have lost my eye forever. Pre-launch checklist. PRF code. Entered. AEA power. On. AEA bit. In progress. Passed. Weapon power. On. Weapon bit. Passed. Code weapons. Coded. Weapon status. Weapons ready. Pre-launch checklist complete. And is it part of the sorrows of war that are understood by people at Walter Reed Hospital and in places all across our country where people return from the wars, their lives changed forever. Namro, eight-year-old, killed by U.S. airstrikes while part of a double wedding procession on the way to one of the room's houses in the village of Pachona, Nangakar province, 6 July 2008. Asa Anwar Nuera, killed with a daughter in over 20 other villages in the U.S. bombing of the village of Agam north of the Tora Bora Mountains, Afghanistan, on 2 December 2001. Pilot, Sentinel, you are clear to engage white pickup truck at your discretion. Pilot, clear to engage white pickup truck. Looks like it's on the move. Launch checklist, MTS auto track. <laughs> Niaz Mohammed, killed by U.S. Apache helicopter fire in the village of Koni Bacha, Pakteya province in Afghanistan on the 31st of July, 2002. Yes. Yeah. Established. Laser. Laser selected. Go ahead and arm your laser. Laser's armed. Master arm is hot. Go ahead and fire the laser. Lazing. Within range. This is for Shireen H5, killed by U.S. airstrikes. Part of a double wedding procession that was bombed on the way to one of the groom's houses in the village of Kachona, Nagar Province, July 6, 2008. Three, two, one, rifle. Three, two, one, impact. Excellent job. Indictment for violations of human rights. We charge the chain of command from President Barack Obama to Secretary of Defense Robert Gates to Commander Colonel Kevin Bradley to every drone crew with the following crimes. Extrajudicial killings, violation of due process, wars of aggression, violation of national sovereignty, and the killing of innocent civilians. We charge that these crimes are committed in violation of the Constitution of the United States, the Charter of the United Nations, the Golden Rule, and of international law, to which we are especially bound by Article 6, Section 2 of the Constitution, which states, all treaties made 
or which shall be made under the authority of the United States shall become the supreme law of the land, and the judges in every state shall be thereby bound. Anything in the Constitution or laws or any state to the contrary notwithstanding. We demand that they immediately stop these crimes and be accountable to the people of the United States and Afghanistan. Yes. We appeal to all United States citizens, military, civilian, and to all public officials that we are required by the Nuremberg principles and by conscience to refuse to participate in these crimes and to denounce them and resist them nonviolently. We charge that the Air National Guard of the United States of America, headquartered at the Hancock Field Air National Guard base, is maintaining, utilizing MQ Reaper drones for use in combat. Extrajudicial targeted killings by the use of unmanned aircraft drones by the United States of America are intentional, premeditated, and deliberate use of lethal force in violation of U.S. and international human rights law. In support of this indictment, we cite the United Nations Special Rapporteur on Extrajudicial Summary Arbitrary Executions, who has said that the use of drones, quote, I mean, excuse me, use of drones creates, quote, a highly problematic blurring and expansion of the boundaries of the applicable legal frameworks, human rights laws, the laws of war, and the law applicable to the use of interstate force. The result has been the displacement of clear legal <coughs> standards with a vaguely defined license to kill and the creation of a major accountability vacuum. In terms of the legal framework, many of these practices violate straightforward applicable legal rules. Let all accused in this indictment understand that our words are spoken nonviolently. All are invited to stop the use of drones and refuse to participate in illegal warfare. Oh